Stories Podcast, your number one show for everything guitar. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Guitar Stories, episode number 71. I'm Andy Ferris, and I'm with Mr. Daniel Getka. Hello, Daniel. Hello. Hey, Andy. That was rather, rather formal. I don't know why I went all formal then, mate. It's, uh, I don't I know. I felt like being formal. Yeah, okay. So it's a formal episode. Maybe that's the title, then. <laughs> Maybe... <laughs> Well, we might need a new title <laughs> um, <laughs> this evening, this afternoon, this morning, this today. We hopefully will be joined by Dave Simpson, who hasn't turned up yet, but I have full faith that he will because he's a man of his word. And um, yeah, until then, Dan and I will just entertain you with our, our uh, whatever it is that we do without a guest. Yeah, I, I gotta say, um, since I, I joined last week a little bit later, I really enjoyed the banter that went on between Martina and you. That was very entertaining. It was like 10 minutes of pure gold. Good. Well, <laughs> I, I really enjoy talking to Martina. And I love I love it when things are slightly on the edge, you know, when things are on yeah. the, the cusp of going absolutely wrong, oh, which... Yeah. You know, guitar stories were famous for having technical issues. And you might <laughs> notice, everybody, that we've had some audio issues of late. And there are zero audio issues this evening, this morning, this afternoon. We have crystal clear audio. We have crystal clear images. It's, it's amazing, amazing, isn't it? It's yeah. is amazing. Is that, is that still the same show? I don't know. I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> I don't know where I am. It feels like we're on a, a different podcast. Yeah, it feels like that. Um, right? Hello to the people who are currently watching live. We've got Troy Collins. We've got Valeria. We've got Fergie in France. We've got Jason. We've got Cranar. Uh, we've got David Kay. We've got Guitar Ruckus. We've got April Kurtz. And Dr. Dan is also in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> um, I decided not to stick with Willy Wawa, by the way. Dan. Okay. I thought I'd go back to just being plain old Andy. Yeah, that's I mean, okay. I've, I've got Willy Wawa, names. Willy Wawa really could become some sort of alter ego for you, right? Absolutely. Yeah. You got to save the world, you know, protect the effects. Oh. Whenever there's a guitar player that says, I don't like effects, then there's Willy Wonka on the horizon. <laughs> Willy Wawa, not Wonka. Okay. Sorry. I wasn't going to correct you. I was going to leave <laughs> yeah. it in there. Give you space to edit that <laughs> in, a, in a future episode. Um, there's someone in the chat called Bubbly Juice. That's a fun username. Hello, Bubbly mm. Juice. And Fred Wolf. Um, if you've turned up for Dave Simpson, he hasn't arrived yet, but I, I hope things are well with him. I've written to him. Until then, we've got some guitar news and some gear picks uh, to go ahead with. And uh, yeah, well, we can we can move on with then. Otherwise, we will wing it and, um, you know, we can always invite Pure Ninja or something. Yeah. I'm we sure he's not busy. By the way, is, is Martina in the chat? Probably not, right? Uh, I don't know. <coughs> Hmm. I can't. Martina, are you in the chat? Let us know. Uh, let us know if you are available. Um, hmm. I, I was uh, sp points. sorry. Speaking of Pooh Ninja, he's asked about his peer again. I was uh, delighted to be talking to the lovely Jen Majura earlier today, who has uh -huh. two peers. That's yeah. two more than Pooh Ninja and two more than me. Two more than you, Dan. Nope. You have one then. One more. I got. I got the green one. Sure. Oh yeah, you have the green one, don't you? Yeah, but she she has the black one, which is the best one in my opinion. Nah, and she's got she's got a swirled one. Yeah, the white. She was telling me about the white one being turned into a swirly one. Yeah, uh, yeah that's a, that's a pretty Dave, one. Oh, I've got news from Dave. He's coming on now. He's got problems. Well, if there's anywhere to problems. share problems, <laughs> it's Guitar Stories episode yeah. seventy one. Uh, I'm just going to write to him. No problem, Davo. <laughs> there we go. Oh, I'm not going to call him Davo when he's here. That's that's probably disrespectful. Yep. Uh, but my, maybe by the end of the episode. Anyway, um, we we've got some some news. <laughs> so for the first time in a long time, I'm going to play the the news jingle. <sighs> right, news, Dan. We're going to talk about Gibson. Um, All right. What again. Do you and this time for me, it's not Gibson. Is it positive or is it neutral? It's kind of negative or ne neutral at the, at the worst. Um, it's it's mm. about the whole, you know, the, the lawsuit stuff again, mm. which uh, I'm not sure how much you personally want to comment on. 
because you know with your job and everything but i can say what the flip i like um, all right <laughs> and i will say flip again um yeah so guitar.com i'm just reading from there it says legends presidents and back to the future witnesses and exhibits named ahead of gibson versus dean trial so it seems that gibson and dean are actually going to go to court and or i should say armadillo enterprises the parent company of dean mm -hmm. um and uh what's the other guitar company they have is it luna uh, luna, luna guitars, guitars correct luna yep, guitars correct. Yep. yeah like, i always thought it was gibson's um what's the word uh strategy to threaten to take people to court and do the cease and desist and then never actually get to court so that they can't be proved wrong like what happened with prs etc um yep. so it's always and this is why they've earned the name bully company because they it's always easier to you know speak large things and, and never actually actually have to deliver on them mm -hmm. uh but it seems they're going to court next week and they've got some really interesting stuff um, happening if it goes ahead. So um, the Evan Rubinson from Armadillo says that he's vowed that the company would launch their own complaint against Gibson, seeking to get the trademarks over which the two companies were clashing. The Flying V, the Explorer, the ES, the Hummingbird and the Modern cancelled. That's going to be fun. Mm -hmm. Um but my, my my most fun thing is they're going to be using like bits of evidence to prove that Gibson own the trademarks, <laughs> etc. And one of the, oh, sorry, two of those um, uh, pieces of evidence, and what they call, yeah, notable pieces of evidence, is Michael J. Fox's performance of Johnny Be Good in Back to the okay. Future. Fair enough. And Back to the Future Two, if, if you're going to go that far. And is it in Back to the Future Three? I don't think it is. Um, and a SpongeBob SquarePants branded <laughs> Flying V ukulele. <laughs> But yeah, thoughts then? Ridiculous, ridiculous. I mean, um, they they had been um, Gibson had already lost uh, the law case about the flying V in in Europe. They they were mm -hmm. in clinch with uh, with Framus, and uh, for a long time, Framus wasn't allowed to sell the the Wolf Hoffman, Hoffman um, flying V signature guitar, for instance, in Germany, because of that uh, pending case. But uh, like the final decision about that was basically that. Uh, there's no such such thing like uh, a, a trademark infringement from from Framus side because there is a clear differentiation between both brands and between the products they they stand for and also and this is like one of the most important facts um, usually any kind of shapes if you try to protect them you can only protect them for a certain amount of time and then it, it goes so if there's a you know you cannot like do a one 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 on one copy but if there's like the slightest alteration or you know difference between the two designs there's absolutely no problem you know you see that you see that nowadays even in, in grocery stores where where the the cheapo you know knockoff brands they have like cans that are red and black and they look almost identical to coca-cola because you can only like protect your you can protect your brand of course but those kind of shapes in german it's called geschmacksmuster which is a weird name <laughs> no, a, a a taste sample basically. Taste sample. Yeah, you can only protect it for a certain amount of time, and then it becomes like you know, common, common good, and and people can copy that as they wish. Uh, so I don't really see where that should be heading because there's you know as long as they don't put the Gibson logo on the headstock or try to imitate whatever Gibson does, you know, you know, sitting in front of a camera and, and, and talking about playing authentic or stuff like that. I don't yeah. really see a reason how they could ever win that law case or lawsuit. That's just like, I, I you know, you could, you would have to dig a little bit deeper into, into the details about what they are uh, accusing themselves uh, back and forth. But in, in trial, I don't really, I don't really see that they could have a, a chance, you know, I, I don't either. I mean, what what I found funny about the Europe case when it got thrown out in, in Europe was mm -hmm. that the timing's wrong, but it felt like the next week Harley Benton released or re-released their Vs again. I thought that was really funny. <laughs> yeah. So you could get a pretty authentic looking V um, yeah. for what me felt like a week, but was, you know, yeah. definitely not. But yeah, that was really funny. But um, they've got other names uh, coming up. So there's a witness list of guitar and industry experts and representatives coming in to take part in the trial, or at least be able to be called in the trial from both sides. Mm -hmm. And that's senior figures from Collings, Heritage Guitars, Modtech, D'Angelico, Jam Industries and Eastman. 
And uh, Jeff Carey, the senior vice president of Fender Speciality Brands, such as Jackson mm -hmm. and Charvel. Um, this this yeah. could be the biggest news that isn't actually involving playing a guitar in the guitar industry for quite a while. It's, that sounds like a big party. Mm, yeah. Also, I mean, to us, uh, for, you know, the people that are in that MI realm that are living music industries and instruments, that could be as entertaining as uh, the Johnny Case, uh, Johnny Johnny Depp case, basically, right? Yeah, I hadn't thought yeah. of that. You could you could watch that and you know eat some popcorn and just wait until, you know, Heritage, so for is, instance, uh, is, when they um, have to go to court. <laughs> is Gibson Amber Heard in that case? <sighs> have I, they I, ever? Have they ever pooed in the... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> They've shit the bed a few times, I can yeah, tell you that. Yeah, but who's bad, <laughs> basically, you know? <laughs> I don't um, know if they have shit in, in, in Dean's bed or vice versa, but, you know. I mean, if you... if you Basically, like the European uh, the, the European case was ended when uh, the lawyers kind of said that there is no ultimate product protection. You know, you can, you can protect certain True. things and brands... And especially if I compare Dean V's against the Gibson V's, there's, they are so different. I don't really see how that case could go in any other direction than you know, proving that that Dean is not a knockoff uh, of, of Gibson. Uh, it's just, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's a, I, I would have to look deeper into that case, but my gut feeling tells me that it will be a very entertaining but also short-lived uh, affair, and maybe they will just you know find some sort of agreement, and we I never ever hear about it. I, I think I, I think that's what's going to happen. Um, Poo Ninja also thinks so. He says that they's about to be proved wrong or thrown out of court. Yeah. So big time. To be, you know, to, to let's just side with Gibson to be devil's advocate for a moment. It is important to have copyright and and things that can't be directly copied. But as you said, there's enough differences. I think. And I think one of Gibson's major arguments is that people might accidentally think they're playing a Gibson or think they've bought one. Yeah. And I, <clears throat> I'm sorry, you'd have to have a be a really good salesperson and be a really really dumb consumer mm -hmm. to think that. Yeah. Or unfortunate consumer, in case it's ever happened to you, if you're listening, <laughs> you think about sending an email. By the way, if you want to send complaints, send them to Dan. He deals with all the complaints about the show. Dan fourteen of six eighty three on instagram there you go <laughs> um by the way a dave simpson update he is in the green room he's backstage but now he's having slight audio issues i can see okay. them squirreling away uh doing stuff probably oh i got a double thumbs up then uh still squirreling yeah. we'll carry on um which means that um yeah uh it's more exciting because i can see dan can't see this and i, I didn't know until last week that Dan cannot see what I can see. Yep. So you can't see Dave backstage right now. I can. No. I've often in the show referred to things that I didn't know Dan couldn't see. So apologies for that. Never mind. <laughs> so um, let's have a look at the chat before we move a little bit forward. I had an issue this week with, with gear picks, Dan. So Yeah, um, it was rough. It, it was really rough not a great week for gear but um there's there's people have opinions on this stuff people generally think the gibson's going to lose according to the chat mm. um <laughs> i like what jason welch said gibson hands out lawsuits like a certain former u.s president <laughs> i'm going to sue you you and you <laughs> oh oh could you please do a show where you entirely speak like donald trump that was really entertaining <laughs> <laughs> it even looked like him a bit. That was good. I, I I can't do voices, so I can barely do my own voice. <laughs> um, hello to Perfecto de Castro, by the way. Um, yeah, he's coming over to Germany to Henning's Gear Street. All right. Uh, in I want to say August. Is that and he's staying it, over? Is that already like? Are, are you giving away like all the hot information that Henning actually wants to share later, or is that already public knowledge? Well, it's his fault for not being here right now in the live chat stopping me, isn't it? Yeah, good point. I mean, it's you, it's Perf. Who else? Henning, that's it. Henning. That's all you need. All. I'll I'm be not there. Give you... We're already oh, you're coming. Oh, yeah, fantastic. Sure. Yeah. Uh, oh, well, in that case, that's, that's force a party. 
<laughs> Another great comment by what's that Sego guitarist? Yeah. It's going to be the most special, greatest, most powerful Yasu the world has ever seen. Right? <laughs> 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 um, Dave, if you can hear me, how's it looking? Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. A single thumb up. Okay, I, that that's that a good. confident thumb. Yeah. In that case, um, Dan has prepared a little introduction for for Dave tonight. Um, Dan, if you would run with that, I will bring Dave onto the show. All right, cool. But maybe take maybe take your phone away from the microphone. I'm sorry. I got to take a look, a look at the, the notes I made. All right. It's my turn. It's your turn. If I, right. I'll leave. No, no, no. Stay. <laughs> he just removed his, his picture. The image is gone. Anyways, tonight we welcome British guitar YouTuber and gear loony Dave Simpson. Uh, Dave started YouTube uh, back in July 2013. So almost, uh, wow, almost 10 years now. Uh, started demoing gears and kind of created that enigmatic online personality that uh, he's now renowned for. He also already surpassed the 100k mark on YouTube, making him one of the biggest and uh, most, you know, watched YouTuber for gear. And he's also an orange artist. And what makes it so special about it is that he's very confident playing his solid state orange crush. Dave is also um, an active musician playing in the Dave Simpson trio, and he is a crazy fan of John Frusciante. As you would expect, he's playing the Strat, trying to create his own sound, and uh, you know he's renowned for great demos. And this ultimately led him to get a gig uh, at Enderton's to be the new creator of the Sound Like with or without busting the bang category. I think there's a lot of stuff we talked about, so I'm very pleased to welcome him for episode 71. Hello and welcome, Mr. Dave Simpson. Oh, <laughs> hello, Dave. <laughs> hello. Hey, hey. hello. Are those what's are those what's it, sir? I don't know, they're chips. I oh, was the chips? Um, yeah, I, I haven't been able to eat anything yet, so I'm eating on the stream. Jeez, that's okay. Weird. I mean, <laughs> as long as you don't mind sharing, that's fine by me. No, 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 no. So, I'll, I'll pass it through the webcam. No. Throw a chip over me. Oh, what a dude. <laughs> <that right now. laughs> uh, yeah, I hope you can hear me okay. Yeah, hopefully. You, sounding, sounding beautiful, guys. Um, yep. Let's just check the chat. Makes uh, People in the chat, if there's any audio issues, by the way, let us know. If someone's louder than the other one or quieter than the other one, let us know. We'll fix it uh, quicker than the shake of a lamb's tail. Mm. Dave Hopefully. Simpson, welcome not, no, to no, Guitar no, 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 Stories. Thank you very much. Hello, thank you for having me. Good. Awesome um, to be here. Good to have you. It's amazing to have you. I, I've been watching your videos for years, and in, uh, you know that old <laughs> thing where I feel like I know you, but we've never actually met. So finally, Indeed. we're in pixel digital form. Indeed. <laughs> Pixely. Um, yeah. Hello. We, we're we're going to do some gear picks first, Dave. Um, okay, it was okay. a little bit slow on, on new gear in the last seven days. Uh -huh. um, yep. And unless you know something we don't, there was not much released to the no. point where um, Dan's cheated. Yep. In in, in a good way, <laughs> you know, and chose something that wasn't released this week. Uh, I don't suppose, Dave, do you have any favorite gear of the past couple of weeks, months? Uh, not necessarily new. I haven't been buying any new stuff, but um, I did just recently buy an old. 1977 Vox AC30 solid state, which I love. Uh, but uh, as far as uh, I kind of live in the past with the with the gear now, I'm not really kind of like buying any new stuff. I think the last thing I got new was the Ibanez Z uh, or AZES. I don't know how you say it. Uh, mm -hmm. but, and that guitar is immense. Like, is that is such a great like beginner guitar? Uh, you know, semi professional guitar, professional guitar. Yeah, you know, Ibanez don't really make. Naff stuff. I I don't think like their all their attention to detail and finish and fit and stuff like that is immense. So, you, yeah. you don't have to say that if you don't want to, Dave. Just oh no, I, I would happily say it because <laughs> I love that guitar. It's amazing. Good. Which color have you got? Like and is it the tram or, or non tram? Ah, uh, it's the non tram. It's a it's a hardtail. Uh, right, which is really not a, yeah, uh, it's hardtails are a bit of a weird thing as well because I 
big tremolo addict. And I was, uh, I got my first hardtail strat and I thought, oh, it'd be good for, you know, different tunings and messing about with. And then all of a sudden, this is like the best thing ever. It's like it's not having the ten- temptation of a, of, a, of, a, of a tremolo or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's something I... about the old old 60s hardtail strats as well. I really dig them. Whenever mm. I had the chance to play some of these, it, it kind of resonated with me. I don't know why. Mm. They are, there's, there is something extraordinarily special about hardtail strats. There really is. Maybe yeah. we should put tele, maybe we should put like trolls on telecasters. Maybe they got it the wrong way around. Hmm. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Oh, oh <laughs> scary, <laughs> scary ground. Well, um, controversial. Uh, by the way, if, if yeah, we've already done the Gibson lawsuit thing. Be careful. We're going to blow up this week with <laughs> yeah. complaints. Dan's got a full-time <laughs> job, you know. Um, we, if you have any questions for Dave during the show, let me know. I will put a little tick next to them so I make sure I read them out later on uh, when we get to the, the Dave Simpson part of the Dave Simpson show. Great. Um, but first, we're going to do gear. So, so I guess your gear pick is your solid-state AC30. Yes, with the old, um, uh, very old battered and beaten from uh, 77 to 78. They only made them for a year because basically they didn't do distortion they were just like this clean pedal platform thing that they made and um i've seen i've seen one before ages ago but like uh they're not loud you couldn't gig it, it it's, a, it's an ac30 it's a 40 watt amp but it's like whisper quiet uh but for like recording and and uh, and other stuff like that it's amazing uh it's really really, really nice and takes pedals really nicely as well does it sound like an AC30? Like, but just quiet. No. Does it have that? No, it's no. <laughs> it, it's kind of it's kind of void of any tone, <laughs> which is kind of makes it great for pedals, really. Cool. Okay. Yeah, as soon as you put any pedal into it, it just like it comes alive and sounds amazing. So. Great. This that's exciting. Have you got a video coming on that soon, or have you already released uh, one that I haven't seen? I haven't. Not yet. No. Uh, it's going to take me a while to get to this one, but uh, hopefully June. Fingers crossed. I'll get to that. Uh, fingers fingers okay. crossed, guys. Cool. I had a, oh, a Vox Escort for a while. Mm. Um, yeah. That was brilliant. That was re- Again, mm. there was no tone in that, really. It was horrible, but took fuzz pedals <laughs> brilliantly. Yeah. Really I've, got, one, uh, but... I've got Yeah, I've got the Escorts. So I've got the bass and the lead. <laughs> I love them. They're great. I had the lead. Yeah, I had the lead. Yeah, thank you. And I sold it, and it's one of those pieces of gear that I really regret selling, even though I very yeah. rarely used it and it was full of spider webs and you know. Yeah, <laughs> was, yeah. Was the 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 box when I got it back the other night, it was like a scene from Arachnophobia. Like, <laughs> it's <was> horrific. <laughs> Get the Hoover. Yeah. Right, we're gonna do uh, Dan's gear pick first. So, Dave. Uh-huh. Um, in the show, we play a gear called Buy, Borrow, or Burn, where there's three of us uh-huh. and we have three pieces of gear, and then you have to choose to buy one, choose to borrow one, and choose to burn one of these three okay. pieces of gear. The people in the live chat join in, and we all have a jolly good cool. time. Um, and but you know, a jolly time is forced upon you rather than chosen. Yeah, so yeah. you know, uh, what's it? Planned fun, uh, organized fun, and yeah. then um, yeah. I guess <laughs> Dan, I'd, I'd rather you go first because you have. Uh, I don't know. I, are you okay to go first, Dan? Is that okay? I can go first, of course. Yeah, yeah. And you get you get your little jingle first. All right. Dance, pick up the week. Dance, pick up the week. All right. Still loving that jingle. <laughs> All right. My pick of the week is actually, like you already said, a slightly cheated pick of the week but since it it, it was a model that was uh, a little bit overlooked at that time when it got released in early 2022 uh, i decided it's time to give it a little bit of a feature and i'm talking about the maybach Marilyn fm or the maybach Marilyn in general it's a thin line double cutaway guitar by a uh, german company iMusic network they own the the, the maybach brand and it's a very interesting interpretation that reminded me of a lot of uh, a lot of different models. Um, the first thing I thought about it was a the Yamaha West Borland signature. I don't know why, but it's kind of you know the shapes oh, yeah. and everything. Yeah, it's it's kind of close to that, and still has a lot of kind of a very traditional vibe, like a little bit of ES three three five, but also a little bit of kind of 
I don't know, heritage and a little bit of famous. It's it's like a, a wild mixture of a lot of things. And uh, knowing that um, the Czech the Czech people um, create incredible instruments, basically, you know, the, all the Maybachs that, that we played and had the chance to try out, they, they were all pretty good. Kind of tempted me to to really want to try out this guitar. And uh, our friend Krainer, who's who's probably in the chat, he had the the absolute privilege. To get uh, sent the very first uh, Maryland model that was created by the guys at iMusic Network, so there will definitely be a review soon, and uh, maybe we'll see some more. And I was just stoked to see something so different. You know, we talked about the the, the Theodore, the, the guitar that nobody liked except for Andy, and uh, a lot of <laughs> a lot of people gave a lot of praise to Gibson for trying out something new. But to me, the, the whole Maryland design is. Is even more special, and I, I, I just, I just dig it. If we, if we narrow it down to the specs, it's basically just a slab of mahogany, uh, like I said, thin line construction. Uh, so you've got sides, top, back, all mahogany. It's a nitro lacquer. That's pretty cool. That's an option for the uh, for the Maybach guitars. You don't have to. You can also have a poly coating, but uh, the nitro is definitely a plus. Uh, it's got a <laughs> mahogany neck. So. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> Just so your head appear out the side, maybe. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, Ember Spirit pickups, uh, like Ember Spirit of 59 pickups. It's a pretty cool, pretty red guitar. Uh, and also reasonably priced. I think that's uh, it clocks in at around uh, 2.5K, which for a guitar built in, 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 in Europe is quite okay. Reasonably so, priced. Come on. For a guitar that's built in Europe, I mean, what do you pay for a custom shop Strat? You know, I I, I don't disagree. It's just the the pause you put in between, you know, reasonably priced and built in Europe. It was, <laughs> it, was a, it was a pregnant pause. I enjoyed it. I know, um, I know, but for what you get, I think it's okay. I I like this guitar very much now that I've seen it in Cranar's social media posts and video because when my back first released the pictures. I wasn't that taken by it. Um, mm -hmm. I like the finish, but I have a bit of a thing for like ES335s where someone copies them and just sort of offsets the horns mm -hmm. a little bit or the mm -hmm. Mickey Mouse. Mm -hmm. It just bothers me when it's when it's just a little bit different. But this one is different enough to be its own thing, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any any thoughts, Dave? What do you reckon? Um, it's nice. Again, I'm, I'm not the biggest kind of hollow body user. I've, I've um like like beyond what's considered healthy on the game front um <laughs> the hollow bodies are kind of like you know they kind of tend to run away but i, I like that personally i like loads of feedback and, and distortion and the gain um but i'm not a big free free uh five kind of fan but i i always love the way they look but i, I know what you mean about the whole kind of like uh i think vintage do it where there's they have a free free five copy and like one horns yeah. higher than the other and it just That's looks like Someone's melted oh. a free free five. That's exactly like, the really one strange. I was thinking of. I just I just didn't want to say it because I, I pick on yeah. certain brands occasionally. I, but yeah, the vintage one just mm. they did a Dave Grohl one as well, and then they mm. got in trouble, so they changed it to the uh, and it just looks wrong. So mm. yeah, but yeah, well mm. well priced affordable guitars. Um, all right, mm -hmm. the my back. What are we thinking in the chat? Anybody uh, except for Crane? Anybody excited about that one? Um. Melodify says pineapple headstock. Is that a password for something? That sounds like a password for something. I don't know. But the headstock actually dates back to Larson Brothers. It's a original design for uh, of an acoustic guitar brand that was called Larson Brothers. I, I don't I don't know if they ah. are still sold, but that's I, their original shape. I can't get a close up. Is it hang on, I've got to get close to the screen. Yeah. Is pineapple that the same as the like other a code word? It's like, you know, if you're yes, meeting yeah. somebody shady at night in a park, pineapple headstock. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's like a yes, safe word, you. you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> pineapple headstock. Are you pineapple? I'm pineapple? cracking safe word. Yeah. That's a great yeah. safe word. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the safe word is whiskey. Um, I have a few <laughs> my back guitars. I have the Albatross, the SG alike, and it's up there in my top three guitars. I have the Lester, which is actually just there. That's got Ooh. spirit of uh, amber 59s in them and that that should be a great guitar so i'm i'm actually going to play it soon i hope Crano's going to uh let me have a go on it 
So I'll, I'll let you know. But that's a good choice. Good gear choice, Dan. Cool. Um, yeah. At least from 2022. You know, we're, we're getting... Our criteria, you know, we we gotta got to be a little bit less strict on that. Exactly. Yeah. It's our show. We can do what we want. Yeah, of course. We? I mean, we, we can we, even talk about synthesizers. We did last week. We had there a go. show pretty much. Are you into synths, Dave? I am indeed. Uh, I have one right literally beneath me. <laughs> <laughs> you can never be too far away from a synth and a guitar. There you go. <laughs> Chips and synths. Yeah. Warm uh, like feet. Warming your feet. What synth is it? Is it like, not the, that I know? Uh, Paul... anything. Called monologue. It's uh, okay. it's like it's, ba- it's basically like you know a, a synth for idiots like me who uh, I don't know what I'm doing with it. So I just kind of like go, oh it looks cool and I just turn things until it sounds good. But other people actually have logic and I don't. That sounds great. That does. And yeah, it sounds like some kind of like duck sinking. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I I find the synth world. Um amazing and and very very in, engaging but it's beyond me and and mm. you know pa- patching all those cables together i've seen absolute geniuses oh God, yeah. connect things and make great sounds and it's beyond me i can barely do patch mm. cables and pedals <laughs> i know exactly how you feel <laughs> thanks so, I I'll see you like, there's like pictures of john fashani with his like modular synthesizers and there's like 80 million patch leads hanging out and he's just like duh, 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 turn yeah. this turn that it's like how give me a breakdown Unbelievable. Right. Um, I, I'm going to do uh, my gear pick. So I get a little jingle, Dave. Um, we get to play cool. it. Cool. pick of the week. A bit of synth on that for all the synth yeah. lovers out there. Yeah. Pretty sure it's not a Korg monologue. I, I don't have one. It was whatever the preset was in Logic. Um <laughs> My pick of the week is the thing that excited me most, and that's kind of the rules, whatever excites you most in the guitar gear world that week or, or year or quarter. And as we said, there was not much and nothing much excited me. But I did have to choose something. And I was going to choose my Electro Harmonics B9 that I bought, which I've been having amazing fun on. Um, and you can make some great noises with that and some terrible noises as well that, that wake the neighbors, <laughs> both of which are good. But I didn't choose it because um, Dan made me choose this. No, because this actually did uh, make me excited. It's a new Harley Benton. It's a Fusion with EMG pickups. Uh, the Crikey. Fusion T EMG HT. Those names are getting longer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It's a satin black finish, which I think looks amazing. And you've got the T style and the S style. Uh, there's some kind of um, bridge thing on there that I can't see what it is, but it, it looks great. Um, and I've just been playing a Fusion T. Uh, and spoiler alert, because by the time this goes out and no one's watching live, I didn't like it very much. And it's not a raving review. And okay. mostly because the, the guitar just sounds a bit dead and flat and lifeless. Mm. However, that thing probably sounds like what it looks like mm. with those EMGs in there. Or at least I would hope. Um, mm-hmm. It's coming in at around £377, about €400. Euros. Um, mm. And yeah, I think, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to do very well. Uh, it's a roasted maple neck, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. And then what else we got? We've got the the satin finish. And what I love is the adjustable truss rod uh, on the fretboard, the wheel. Mm. I love that. That's my favorite. Yeah, spoke with. That's my favorite way to adjust a truss rod. Sometimes I adjust Mm. truss rods when they don't need it, just because I love it so much. (laughs) 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 What do you have for tonight? Well, just a couple of truss rods. I just (laughs) adjust a couple of truss rods. Do they need it? Because he can. Because he can. But the access yeah. is so easy. Yeah. <laughs> Just turn so it backwards smooth. and forwards constantly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you that have to do it within like, 30 ah! days of buying it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you do it within 30 oh. days of buying it, you're okay. Oh, dear. Mm. Um, I have That's actually snapped the before. It wasn't, wasn't fun. No, I don't <laughs> do that. I, I was just a joke. Just a silly, silly joke. 
Um, but they, yeah, the Fusion stuff is a reverse headstock. Um, That's cool. The EMG Retroactive Hot 70 humbucker in the bridge and neck position. And I think it's possibly great. It's Nyato, which is one of my favorite words because I've learned how to say it. Um, Canadian Maple. The only thing I don't like is it's Modern C neck, which it probably should be, you know, but that doesn't fit my hand very well. Oh. I, th I think it's a universally useless neck profile <laughs> but everyone, for everybody uh tusk nut you know all these things that i you, i would suggest you upgrade on a harley benton harley benton have already done it uh hip mm -hmm. shot bridge that's the one i couldn't remember the name and it comes with a dario 10 to 46 so that's my pick the uh the emg loaded satin black roasted maple neck harley benton fusion t mm -hmm. very nice there's yeah. there's one caveat about the guitar, Andy. Um, cool. I absolutely dig that they 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 come with uh, stainless steel frets. But if you have stainless steel frets, you have to do a very good fret job at the factory or at your QC. That's true. So mm -hmm. I hope that uh, whatever they send out has a receives a proper fretage treatment because otherwise it will be horrible. Because as a you know as an inexperienced user is, is kind of hard and if you if you take that guitar for fret uh, out for fret dress it can easily you know sum up to 100 150 bucks so that's yeah that's something where where i'm a little bit undecided so i hope that they will do a great job at qc apart from that i mean the pickups alone they retail for 200 bucks so it's definitely like if you look just at the at the the parts it's definitely a lot of bang for the buck but i hope that the sum of all parts is, is even you know bigger than just every you know all the, the single pieces added up hmm. <sighs> i love it when dan talks tacky stuff it, it makes me feel <laughs> like we have you know some grounding on the show <laughs> <laughs> you mean that's the boring part or <laughs> definitely not. To... <laughs> that's, no definitely not that means that you know it feels legitimate Whereas I'm just going, it's black. I like it. Yeah. You know. No, it's you know, here's shiny. the thing. I I really like, you know, I've I've been when I was a, a teenager, I I hated to play guitars that were so bad. And I had like Squire Stage Masters and um I remember one of the very early Harley Benton tellies with a Perloid pickguard and uh, you know, and a friend of mine bought it and uh, he basically quit playing and he he gave the guitar to me and I, I you know I played it a little bit and I couldn't stand it I really I really you know wanted to to get into the classic tones but it was so bad and seeing how everything has improved over time and what is possible in 2022 to get for 200 300 or even 450 bucks is insane so I think we talked about that in in previous episodes that it's a blessing to be born in or to to start playing in in these times because you get so much for so little money. But on the other hand, I hate if resources are being wasted. So I hope that you know the quality for every single instrument will be spot on. Mm. It would be would be a pity to see those go to the bin. I hope so. Um, if I get one in, I'll let you know. Cool. Okay. It is time to buy, borrow, or burn. <laughs> I borrow or burn. <laughs> yes, it made Dave laugh. I was hoping the horror was going to make Dave laugh. <laughs> 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 um, that's always my favorite bit, just watching the guests react to that little horn at the, at the end of their jingle, see what happens. Right. <laughs> Some people, Dave, no reaction. They're dead inside. No. Dead inside. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, so buy, Even borrow, or burn. You have to buy one. You have to borrow one. You have to burn one. We're not really uh -huh. going to burn them, so nobody really gets upset if we if nope. you burn your favorite thing. It's just a just a part of the show that we're forced to do contractually. Um, so, Dave, we also guess for each other. So uh -huh. that makes it you know that 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 amplifies the fun by at least ten percent. So. Okay. Uh, how do we do this, Dan? I always get confused by the guessing because I, I forget who's guessed for who. Um, Let me guess for I... you and you guess for Dave and Dave guesses for me. How's that? Okay. As long as you keep track okay. of that because I'm going to forget that. I'm okay. going to forget that as well. I've got a brain like a sieve. Okay. <laughs> All right, Dan. Um, before, yeah, we'll do Dan's guess for, I've already forgotten, for me, right? 
Uh, I think for Dave. Oh, yes. Right. You definitely Andy, changed it. Andy, oh, Andy Dave, Dave, Dan. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So Dave, Dave has to, to do it for me. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Let's go. All right. I'm ready. So we have uh, we have the Maybach, um, uh, the Marilyn, we have the Harley Benton Black EMG Fusion, and we have Dave's Solid State Vox AC30. Dave, <laughs> what do you reckon Dan would buy? It's not going well for me, is it? Um, probably burn the Vox. I don't know, it's a guess. Uh, just because I, I haven't as like he bigged it up by saying it's toneless. Uh, it's not really great, is it? It's like, <laughs> you, can't, you can't sell it. It's my guitar company going to like Nam and saying it's yeah. something called her stands like, oh, what's this amp like? It's toneless. Well, how... <laughs> Guaranteed zero tone. <laughs> Guaranteed to bore your socks off unless you have pedals. Um, I would say the, May the Maybach is um, a, a buy. Um, uh, and I would say, yeah, the the Harley Benton's the uh, the borrow. I'm guessing that's that. So yeah, Vox is burn. Uh, the Maybach is buy, and the uh, Harley Benton's burn. No, no, we went around. I've got that wrong. Ah, my brain. Um, it's yeah. hard, isn't it? See, it's not just me. <laughs> no, bees. So buy. That's the game. Alliteration. Uh, yep. Buy the my back. Buy the Harley Benton. Burn the Vox. Is that correct? That's, that's the one. Your final answer. Yes. That's, that's what he's saying. Yeah. So uh, nope. Like ah. Uh, <laughs> borrow. Buy the my back. Borrow the amp just to see because if you like it, you know I've got the pedals as well. So let's yeah. give it a shot, and then burn yeah. the <coughs> knockoff uh, Harley Benton guitars. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, okay. like, I got one right. Why? One why should good. I try something else? Right? Really? <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> okay, it's your choice, Dan. It's the choice of yeah. your generation. All right. Yeah. Um, before anyone else, pick, Dave's vanished. Before, oh, there he is. Um, I'm back. <laughs> <I'm> how many? <laughs> have you got like a big bucket of chips on this? I'm imagining you with like yes. a, a full-on dustbin of chips next to you. <laughs> it's pretty close. <laughs> so uh, spitting it on the webcam. <laughs> right, we're going to go to the live chat to see what the people in the live chat would do before I guess for Dave because I need some some help here. So Fergie in France would buy the Maybach, borrow the Harley Benton, and burn the Vox. Oh, okay. Oh, poor Vox. Okay. Poor Vox. Something's going to get burned. <laughs> Uh, David Dillinger, Double D, would buy the Maybach, borrow the amp, burn the HB. The Maybach's doing well so far. Mm -hmm. I, I'm I'm kind of losing. Buy the Harley Bentons and mod them. Okay, I'd be interested mm -hmm. to know what you would mod. Borrow the Vox and burn Maybach because it's not just my it's just not my style. That's a great Fair reason, enough. Fred Wolf. Well done. Yep. Though so you don't need my justification. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> it's, your, it's your life live it um uh the mohu cooper says the real answer should be slap the hands of whoever burns a guitar elbow cough yeah it's, just it's a game yeah it's game it's just, mr cooper. If it's possessed what if a guitar's possessed and coming at you in the night like, <laughs> yeah. you never know i think i think that should be allowed we'll need c confirmation from mohu cooper on that but i think that should be allowed the new Gibson uh, Chase... possession model. <laughs> <laughs> they might need that in a couple of weeks. Uh, oh, yeah. Jason Welch would buy the Maybach, borrow the HBs to see what the hype is all about, and burn the Vox since I already have a Vox solid state slash modeling amp. Okay. Uh, and one more. No, two more. Uh, Valeria would buy the Fusion HB, uh, borrow the Maybach, and burn the amp. And marry the Onyx Black Pia. Don't the Pia wasn't part of the choice, Valeria. That's cheating. But I, I would marry the Pia as well. To be fair, really? I, I okay. probably would. Oh ridiculous guitar that is. <laughs> David K would burn the my back. Wow. That's two burns. Uh borrow the Vox and buy the Harley Benton. Yes, I gotta buy. <laughs> really? And if you're wearing a light t shirt, don't raise your arms above your head again, Andy. On live. <laughs> <laughs> it's warm in here. Yeah. <laughs> um, our Rex FX, just because I like to see what he says. Buy the my back, borrow Dave's amp, burn Barbie Fenton. 
Okay. Barbie Fenton. Barbie Fenton. That's, that's fun to say. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I've got a guess. I've got a guess for Dave. I think Dave would and has bought mm-hmm. the Vox. So that's kind of cheating. Yeah. I don't think he's going to get rid of the Vox. I think he'd. Oh, this is tough. Dave, I don't know you that well. Just creating tension for the purpose of the show. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think you would borrow the my back and burn the Harley Benton. Where's the, where's the screen? There it is. Yep. Oh, that's right. Yes. Yep. Just, I take <laughs> this so seriously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that was tough, though, stuff. Dave. That was, mm. yeah. That was, <laughs> that was tough knowing, you know. Because I know you're into strats and, and the Harley Benton is strat ish, but mm-hmm. also the Maybach, you said you weren't into 335s. Oh, I think the, we're on the way to a wins close friendship. over with the gorgeousness. Uh, yeah. I, I'd be true. curious to try it though because it's just got something. It definitely has something. Hmm. Well, there's not many of them around yet, but I'm sure there will be. Um, and uh, yeah. I, Makes them happily... even more special, right? Exactly. Just like us, we're all unique. I'm not. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, Dave, would you choose yes. for no? No, have you no. Cho- no. It's my no. turn for yes. It's my turn for you, Andy. Like I'm. I'm choosing See, I told you I'd screw it up. Ah. Wouldn't, oh. wouldn't that be scary? Oh. Wouldn't, wouldn't that be scary if my, if my finger would come out on that side? Yeah. That would be ridiculously funny. Oh, I can't do yeah. it. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Which way would oh, that yeah, that's, that's, that's it. If you're, the, <laughs> if you're listening to the audio version, we're just diving around on camera. Okay, yeah. Dan, no, choose right. for me, please. All right, I'm, you I'm would burn the Vox because you already have a lot of amps. You would borrow the Holly Bentons just to see how good they are, and you would buy the Maybach because it's oh so special, and you cannot get your hand on a Theodore. <laughs> How's that? sorry um i would weirdly and i hate this game now because it's making me do something i don't actually want to do okay but i would buy the vox because i'm so intrigued by a toneless amp Mm -hmm. i'm 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 super intrigued by an amp that has no tone and i'm actually considering going on vilhaben in a little bit and checking out the classifieds and see if there's any toneless amps for sale near me Then so might, I might would... have to change keywords, though. If you if you look for toneless amp, you might you know. Oh yeah, Sign might not an amp. might not find what you're looking for. No. These are not the amps you're looking for. <laughs> so I'm gonna buy the Vox. <laughs> on the caveat that I'm allowed to use it with pedals. Um, okay. Then I'm going to borrow the Maybach and burn the Harley Benton. Sacrilege. Okay. Right. Interesting. Yeah, that's, 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 I don't know what Dan said, but I know it wasn't quite right. Did you get any right? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Show one shows, and we still don't know each other very well. <laughs> you, to be fair, I mean, those picks, they were not as exciting as, you know, the Vox is definitely exciting, but the rest was. Yeah, see, yeah like... the Vox, that's what I mean. The Vox is exciting me because yeah. I, I, I want an amp. Dave says it's toneless. I need to try it. it yeah. It's yeah, really weird. Yeah. It's exactly set up like a like a real like it is a real AC thirty. Just doesn't actually sound like one. So you have all you got like the brilliant channel, the normal channel, and the, the vibratrem channel. And if you right. plug into like the brilliant channel, you have to run the treble on full to get any kind wow. of brightness out of it because it's just really dull. Uh, it's got two like Fane speakers in it, uh, the old Fane speakers right. from the seventies. Uh, it, it's, it's just absolutely brilliant. But and I was, you plug into it, and it's just like. Yeah, but you put a pedal into it and the whole amp just goes, I'm alive! And it just sounds amazing. <laughs> at that point. And so when you put like a Marshall Governor pedal into it, it's like, just, okay, well, I don't know what this is going to sound like. That sounds like heaven! It's amazing. <laughs> there is one for sale near me for 419 euros. It's down from 650. Is that a good price? It's overly really steep. Okay. What is, could, do you want to divulge what you paid for yours? Uh, one, one hundred and forty pounds. Wow. 
Okay. Um, then I'm, I'm getting ripped off, but I don't, I don't want it that much. I don't want it 400 euros much. No. Mm. I'll take it for, uh, I'll take I'll, it for 150. I'd be, be second guessing on that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Still not getting it. Then, in that case, that was by Bob or Burn for this week. And um, now we get to do the bit where we actually get to talk to Dave Simpson about being Dave Simpson, uh, not being Dave Simpson, pretending to be Dave Simpson, all the sort of things that you'd do if you were Dave Simpson. Um, yep. So I'm going to play a little jingle for Dave so you can just grab a handful of chips and stuff them into your mouth uh, yep. in preparation for the questions. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So, yeah. um, uh -huh. I actually have a question for you okay. uh, because I brought it up on a live stream the other day. Um, if you were in The Simpsons, which one would you be? If you weren't Dave Simpson, which, which existing oh, Simpsons God. character would you be? Um, Mr. Burns, because I can walk Excellent. around like this. Like Actually, yeah. <laughs> just, just hide away. <sighs> And be evil. <laughs> I thought you'd be Otto, the bus driver. I, 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 I'm going to pair. Just, well, I'll wear from... a hat. I'll be all right. He I'll, does I'll, wear I'll a hat and, and headphones. Mm. It, like I could be Otto if, like you know, I was uh, cooler. No, I, I prefer <laughs> you as Mr. Burns. I think you'd make a wicked Mr. Burns. Oh yeah, I I guess guess I can, I've got a bad back, so I can hunch over and be <laughs> that weird, creepy. Just hiding away, playing on side state amps like some evil thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he must be evil, he plays solid state amps. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, again, it's marvellous to have you on the show and thank you oh, for, thank for you. joining us. You were due to join us a few months ago, I want to say, but I mm -hmm. got ill and we had to cancel the whole show and you were very gentlemanly about it, so thank you for doing that. But we finally no, got you back. Um, yeah. How is life? What are you up to recently? Uh uh, it's really, really good. It's probably busier now than I ever have been. It's, 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 it's crazy. It's crazy. Crazy. That's a fighting technique. We're not going to do that. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's a bit, a bit mental. Like just went to a Birmingham guitar, guitar show this weekend and like, doing my usual YouTube things. Um, I work, I film a lot, so I film pretty much every day. So, uh, I've had to start giving my, myself weekends off though. When, when, when I got really, I, I filmed once for about four months straight and got, got really ill, surprisingly. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought yeah. maybe I should start taking at least the weekends off. And, uh, so, um, I've been doing that a lot and obviously kind of, um, the Anderton's thing as well every now and again. So it's kept crazy. I'm trying to do band stuff as well on top of that. So it's good fun. Crazy times. <laughs> we we saw some photos of you at Birmingham Guitar Show and yes. it looked mighty fun. Was it as fun as it looked? Because people it was. It was, it was really, really cool. I, I've been to a guitar show since two thousand and six. Um just for one thing or another. And um this is the first one I've been to and I, I was kind of terrified about going. I was like, Oh god, I don't know how this is gonna go because um weird enough being a guitarist i don't actually like loud noise <laughs> um yeah I, I get kind of like um like uh what's the word over overstimulated if, you will, if there's loud noise and too mm -hmm. many nice things lying around like guitars so but it was it was great fun and it was, it, some of the stuff there is just like ridiculous and it was great to meet uh some of the people who i've, who I've been watching on youtube and seeing all the lovely guitars amps pedals basses all all that lot but it, it was nice. Uh, they, uh, like every now, every kind of like at, like there was an hour of kind of constant noise, and then they would sound a klaxon, and everyone would have to shut up for half an hour. And that was a kind of a nice part where you could actually talk to people about it. like that. It's like just trying to hear everything over. <laughs> of, the, of the guy in the next door, just like shredding and sweet picking yeah. constantly. It's like <sighs> does that does the the fabric curtain between the booths does that not keep the sound out? Uh, no. <laughs> oh, you wanna, you yeah, know, you, you think being a guitar show, it'll be a soundproof booze, but no. There, there was just like just this constant like stream of like legato lines and sweet picking going on. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> like, wow. well, that, that's kind of good because I, I went uh, in 2020, 21, mm -hmm. whenever the last one was, 2020. Mm -hmm. 
uh, to yep. Birmingham Guitar Show, and it was great. I had a really good time, but I mm. felt that it could have had some more people. You know, it wasn't it wasn't empty, but certainly yeah. it wasn't jam packed, and that sounds like it was certainly busy. Oh yeah, it was. Uh, I went I went both days because I, I I could I didn't make it round all of it in one day, so I had to go both days. And um, the first day was a lot busier than the second, and it was just literally walking. It's just like seas of people. Which, um, again, for somebody with crippling anxiety, is good fun to wade through. But it, you know, I just focus on the guitars and just go. There's a guitar, so I'm happy as long as guitars are there and I can grab one if I need to. We're okay. Right. Good. good. <laughs> Did you have any favorite uh, favorite things that you saw? Or uh, yeah, there, there was a few. Uh, well, it, it's it, where to start. Really. There's, there was so many. I got to meet uh, Ben Crow of uh, Crimson Guitars. He gave me this awesome T-shirt. Um, nice. who I've been watching forever and I love his guitars I love, love how he is and he's literally like the nicest person known to mankind and there were some other guitars that I tried um, uh, that were just like ridiculously good like it's like where are these luthiers coming from because they're so good some of the guitars are just like art pieces and they're like you can't play that it's that, that long like an art music like the idea <laughs> of actually like, making a plectrum to it is like no but they are incredible, and there was some kind of um, there was some guys who had like replica like Telecasters and Strats and fifty nine Les Pauls, and it's like, how have you done that? That look, that looks, feels, and sounds exactly like a real fifty nine or, or a sixty Strat or a sixties Telecaster, and it's like, okay, <laughs> bit terrible. I really wish I'd quite gone quite now. Fun. I was I was all planned to come, and then just you know for family stuff and things like that i couldn't come and then seeing you guys and, and other friends at the show i was like oh i really really wish i'd gone um there's always next year i get to go to a few shoes yes i, I well i hope so i hope i'm i'll mm. make it extra available for next year <laughs> take this year off cool but yeah, yeah it looked really really fun mm. did you did you play at all like were you there as a band or were you there as uh no i was just there looking uh, yeah, just there looking, which, which I kind of prefer to be honest. I, don't, I kind of want to be kind of. Uh, I don't really. Like, I don't like the idea of being like tied to a stall. I'd rather be just kind of like wandering around like an Amos Goblin, just annoying people. <laughs> Can I try this? Yeah. <laughs> weird lurking, balding creature in the corner. <laughs> I just remembered. There's a video of me that I shot at the last one I went to, talking to mm -hmm. Neil Iverson of Iverson Guitars, where it's so loud. I'm stood next to him shouting in his ear and he can't hear what I'm saying and I can't hear what he's saying so I'm asking him questions and he's answering questions but they're not necessarily mm. the questions that I ask <laughs> yeah brilliant that's great content at some point in the video the noise stops and I'm still shouting um, <laughs> I'm not sure if I if that made it into the edit but it was a really fun video to shoot and Iverson it's guitars brilliant. are phenomenal um, yeah. yeah that made me laugh did you did you get to meet any new guitarists that you didn't have on the map yet? Any like, um, new faces or um, not particularly? No, I kind of was um, I, 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 because of the noise and everything. I couldn't see anything. Like, uh, but I, like when when things, I was wearing earplugs because it was just too loud. But when I get into a, a situation like that, my vision just kind of goes like, zoom, and I can see like this much, and I just turn into like this really like. Um, extremely socially awkward human being which uh sometimes can look a lot more ca calm and confident than he actually is inside but um there was there was a lot of really cool guitarists like there was uh, there was one young like, like young lad up that we met on the the second day and he i think he was like something like uh, 12 or something like that and he, he was really good and uh just nice to see like really young kids at guitar shows going around and trying guitars and playing and stuff like that. I think it's wicked. It's really cool. And then you get like some jazz guys who are just like, you know, listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> if I see someone doing that, I, I just want to walk out to them with my fingers and my ears. I'm not listening to you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there was one guy. There was there was like one guy who, did, who was just just determined to play louder than everybody else. At the show. I'm going to turn this amp up louder than everyone and start breaking out his jazz chops. And it's like just uh, one of the guys on the stall said, "But not people. A lot of guitarists aren't being very considerate to others because <laughs> it was like some stands were just like deafening compared to others." And 
especially uh, there was one that it was great. The klaxon had gone off. I didn't want to quiet him down. And, and then half an hour went by and I can't remember where we were, but the klaxon went off again. And you just heard kind of like ramping up of guitar amplifiers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the death spell level. <laughs> Also, you're like, yells and you can't hear yourself even think. It's just absolutely brilliant. <laughs> oh, I like the idea of loud jazz. That's, that's, I wouldn't uh, expect yeah. jazz to be the loudest genre at a guitar event. No, I, th- I think he, he was kind of like, you know, I'm going to put some culture into these swines. Yeah, but I, I'm, I'm feeling the culture through you, so it's, it's working. You did a good job. It worked, yeah. We have a question from the chat. Now. Yeah. <laughs> With no pedals through a box. And no a from the chat from Albus Band is favorite Nirvana album. Mine is in utero, but they all rule. So favorite Nirvana album. Um, I know mine straight away. Do you mind if I answer first? Is that cool? Uh, I'm going to go with Bleach. Uh, Bleach, the first Nirvana album, but it changes on a fairly regular basis. And I'm in a bit of a Bleach phase at the moment. Uh, it's more often than not in utero. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, my, I mean, I'm I'm torn between uh, I don't know if anyone will say it's cliche if Nevermind is it but I grew up with Nevermind but my favourite probably my favourite album is Incesticide which kind of isn't it's like a B-sides album but it's got aneurysm on it live and new wave it's the most Polly, fun album really like. it is it's great it's amazing I, I love the artwork on the in uh, Incesticide as well it's amazing yeah. amazing um uh Nevermind came out and listening to that and playing Doom on a on the on on a Super Nintendo. I'm dating myself. <laughs> super, uh, are we are we around the same age, Dave? I'm forty. Huh? In which uh, 40, I'm thirty five. Oh, so uh, yeah, thirty five. Oh, He's the baby here, right? I mean, come on. Wow. You oh, both look a lot younger than I do. <laughs> I'm, like, this is, I, I, I'm telling I, I you what, it's it, the yeah. solid state amps, Dave. It's the solid state amps. Yes. They're sucking the tone out of your life. Someone's turning back on Quick, again. throw valves at him. Get some <laughs> yeah. quickly. Yeah. Make him eat in the L34, for God's sake. <laughs> now, when you said you remember uh, Nevermind coming out, that was 91. 91, so... yep. I was five. Okay, you've got a pretty good memory then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dan, I'm interested yeah. to know, what is your favorite Nirvana album? Uh, the obvious choice definitely would have to be Nevermind, but personally, I always gravitated more towards Unplugged because it's got that almost frightening atmosphere. You can kind of feel uh, how melancholic and, 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 I don't know, almost like internally torn uh, he is and and it's just it's like the whole band and and everything is just so so dark I, whenever i listen mm-hmm. to the unplugged album i i always think it's it's an incredible album but it's not something that i want to listen on on repeat understand what i mean mm. it's like one of the, like some of the movies that are incredible like the revenant for instance it's it's, it's such a great movie but you don't have to watch it twice <laughs> right mm. it's just uh, yeah. that's like you every now and then I, I every now and then i really enjoy listening to the album but then you know after i've, I've listened to the whole album it's okay and then I, I i turn my attention to something else or a different style of music so yeah but definitely definitely unplugged it's like unplugged to me i i, I really dig the the format in general like uh, i don't like clapton playing the electric guitar but his unplugged album is one of the most influential albums f- for, for me personally, when it comes to playing the acoustic guitar, but because there are so many songs on it that I tried when I was a teenager, and yeah, it's just I, I like I like unplugged. It's so raw and, and you can't hide really. It's just it's yeah. so pure. I, and uh, I think I want to change yeah. my answer to because unplugged just moves me so deeply. I, I I'm not sure I have an answer, but currently I'm in yeah. Uh, that's a terrible. It's question. slightly ironic as well that Kurt ran his uh, acoustic through a Fender. Uh, Deluxe or a twin, sorry. Yeah. Twin. The twin, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was like, like yeah, the, 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 the DI is not doing it for me because I want to run a DS2 and a chorus pedal for it. So Fender Amp it is. <laughs> we'll disguise it as like, oh, they'll never know. Yeah. 
Do you, Dave, would you would you say that uh, um, Nirvana, like from their music influence and also their tone, were a big influence on on you, or is it more like yeah. the more yeah, okay, yeah, so yeah. grunge? I, mean, I I grew up listening to Nirvana and Oasis. They were like the two. Okay. Like I, say, I remember like yeah, being ridiculously young and listening to Nirvana and uh, okay. I always remember I always remember like Lounge Act or something. Like, it's, it's, really, it's the earliest one. Yeah. Oh. Something about that song. <laughs> it's a great bass riff. Mm. Um, but we're here to talk Strats, Hendrix, and John Frusciante. Yeah. Um, I always get upset, Dave, when John Frusciante leaves the Red Hot Chili Peppers because then we know we've yes. got a crap album coming. And then, <laughs> in my opinion, in my poor opinion, uh, but then when he rejoins them, it's all all much worth it again. Um, mm. What is it about John Frusciante that 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 you know peels your biscuit? Um, everything really. The man, the man's just kind of like it was. It, it went off. I mean, it was really weird. I mean, John kind of like came along. I remember hearing "By the Way" on Kerrang TV in uh, about 2002, 2003, I can't remember which, I think 2003 actually. Um, and what, like the music video was on with the deranged taxi driver. And I just was like, I don't know what that is, but I like it. Because up to that point, I um, I just started listening to music again because of other issues. Um, and I listened to music for about, I, I wasn't interested in music or anything like that for about five years of my life. And I just started listening to music again. I started playing guitar and I was I was playing like Green Day and Offspring stuff. And then I heard, by the way, and I was like, what's that? You know, what is that? I want to know what that sound is. And then coincidentally, there was a Top of the Pop special on the Red Hot Chili Peppers doing a promotional thing for the, uh, for by the way. And they did the songs first and then they did Under the Bridge. And I was just like, the guitar tone, the style... I didn't know about Jimi Hendrix at this point. Everything was just like, it was just like, it was one of those moments where like, you know, life changing moments and literally I was just like, I don't, you know, I don't care about like all of a sudden I'm not interested about just bashing out power chords and playing dookie front to back every now and again. I, 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 want, I want to know how to, he's doing that uh, because that speaks to me on a level that nothing else does. And then the more I kind of went down the John uh, rabbit hole, the more I just kind of just, fell in love with the sound and his way of playing and his expression and the way he, there's nothing between him and what he, uh, he when he plays there's there's like no there's no middleman it's like you can see sometimes we get some guitarists you know the, the cogs are going you know it's like oh i can do this next i can do that next i can go here and i can go there with john it's same with like Jimi hendrix and people like that it's just an unconscious flow of of music it, it's nothing else it's like they're no longer um like a, a human being so i'd say so they're, they're literally just a marionette being manipulated by music and it's just channeling all through yep. um okay. and I, I love i love that kind of concept of a uh, of just i don't think just play and john just he is that thing for me and he just it and when i feel like you know i ain't got anything uh, if i listen to something john's done solo wise or with the chili peppers or live or anything like that it, it, it me gives me inspiration i want to play guitar again but it's mm -hmm. not that i never want to not play guitar i always want to play guitar but it makes me just kind of go i want to create i want to get better and i want to i want to do that so to say so mm -hmm. yeah, it's just it's everything it's it's crazy interesting how did you think that uh john's tone or his playing style has changed a lot since he left chili peppers and now that he rejoined uh, yeah, I mean, I would, I would say the the this the newest album they've done, the Unlimited Love album. I would say he's definitely a lot more sparse. I mean, he's he's kind of gone back to kind of Californication kind of sparseness on the guitar. There's not there's not a great deal going on, you know. And he and uh, reading his interview with uh, I think it's Total Guitar, reading his interview with Total, in Total Guitar, yeah, uh, he he said like he wanted to leave space for Flea and Chad and Anthony to shine instead of him. He just and I think that's a very wise choice on his part of just like our first album back, just sit at the back, let it just kind of percolate, if you will, and um, see where it goes. And I'm not going to rush judgment and uh, 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 just kind of rush into it and be like, you know, Mr. Guitar Hero, like I was on Stadium Arcadium. I think it's a very, very wise choice. Uh, he, he always seems to be very, very focused like he, he knows what he wants to do and he, he basically sticks to it like like glue basically I, 
I, I, can, I can imagine he's extremely difficult to deal with sometimes because of that. But um, <laughs> that, like, but he, that that creative mind is he's just like you know, hmm. crikey. <laughs> I'm, I'm I, I find that huh? sorry, no. No, no I was just going to say to to go on from what David just said. The albums where he does play like Steady Arcadium are the ones that mm-hmm. I don't sort of connect with. I, I love it when he's just sitting back, uh, mm. playing those Hendrixy sort of bluesy riffs and licks, and mm. and just oozing, as you said, just oozing guitar rather than thinking about it. I yeah. think that's what it is. And the other stuff, I don't think it seems overplayed in my opinion, but it. I don't know. The band just seems better when when he's. I think you've just explained to me what it is I like about those albums and mm. like the other albums less. Yeah, Dan. Sorry. No, all good, all good. I, I I was actually interested in hearing what you think about that because, full spoiler, I think Stadium Arcadium is the best album they have recorded. I would agree. I'm just I, I, I think it's like from from start to beginning there are so many super strong songs, so many great melodies. Mm. And it's a, a completely different side, a more developed, more, I don't know, a, yeah, some, 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 sort of, uh, some sort of uh, natural evolvement that they went through. And to me, this is the, the culmination of the Chili Peppers. And that mm-hmm. is also why I complete, could completely understand why, um, why he left, why Frushanti left, left after the album. I think... To me, there wasn't a lot to say because it was like it was two sides, and it was full of everything that uh, Red Chip Purpose are all about. And also, to to uh, I'd like to come to the defense to um, Josh Klinghoffer. I think uh, the Getaway was a good album. There are Dark Necessities, for instance, one of my favorite songs. You know, probably mm. among like top top ten Red Chip Pepper songs because I think it's got a very good vibe. It's it's very retro chili pepper esque but also has it has some sort of new flavor to it so i really thought that he added an interesting flavor to the to the to that kind of chemistry in the band but i also agree with with what just dave said when whenever uh whenever um josh and flea kind of jam they have that that kind of immediate chemistry and then you know Chat c- comes into play uh, into the equation, and it's just that that trio kind of thing where they don't even have to talk. You know, it's just like if there's, like you said, if there's a puppeteer somewhere, mm. kind of controlling the three of them, making sure that they are all well connected with each other. And then, I mean, mm. Anthony joins, and then you know they just roll from there. But I think every every phase of the Chili Peppers had its very very distinct um, tone, and and also type of how they how they wrote the songs and how the songs are kind of crafted but personally stadium arcadium best record i, I would agree my, my favorite album is californication personally i love California. californication is 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 the album i would listen to on repeat constantly for the rest of my life but okay. um i do agree uh, stadium arcadium is is the strongest one by far yeah it's, it's the best single of, of yeah i mean best, but Snow yeah i mean it's it, just oh I mean, that is from the moment go snow as you know it's not just kind of like guitarists either who just kind of go oh my god what's that riff it's mm-hmm. it connects on that really melodic level and it's it's just a great incredible incredible music on that album mm-hmm. what's your favorite track uh dave on, on that album just out of curiosity uh, uh stadium arcadium yeah uh whew. It's hard, to, be, uh, hard to say. She looks to me is probably w- one of my favorites. I do love she uh-huh. looks to me. Um, okay. It's also uh, uh, come on girl. I really like come uh-huh. on girl, but I think there's something about she looks to me. Um, the guitar solo in that is just four unison bends over <laughs> over a chord progression. John's not doing anything like anything, especially yeah. just literally just hits the message sustain, hits the thing <laughs> And then it goes back out into uh the verse and Anthony sings Lost in the Valley Without My Horse Without My Horses and the the imagery that creates in my head when I hear that is just like you know it's like oh, just take me now. It's amazing. I <laughs> love it. Yeah. Great. I love your energy, Dave. This this is uh, <laughs> this is definitely one of the reasons that um, you are so successful at what you do, and and I know you make a lot of people happy, including me. Um, 
<laughs> I, I love that about you. And I'm really glad we've got you on a subject that, that lights your fire. Um... Oh, yeah. Be careful, though, because I can ramble like nobody's business. <laughs> Eventually, people say, I'll just shut up about John Frusciante. No, did you know, right? 1992. <laughs> <laughs> we have time, you know. We, yeah, yeah. we can go. Do you have, to, do you have, do have a, do you seventeen years? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. did did um did you go from Frusciante to Hendrix? Is that where you got? Is that a, a progression for you? Um, yeah, it was. I mean, it, it was weird. Well, funny enough, um, my guitar playing kind of journey, if you will, it, it kind of went a bit bizarre. In the first two years of playing, I went from green. Green Day and Offspring to Red Chili Peppers, John Fashanti, and then I went to Ingve Malmsteen. Whoa, what the hell's going on? Okay. And um, all of a sudden, I was like, I want to learn Far Beyond the Sun and Black Star and Guitar Suite and all this. I knew and uh, all the all, uh, Rising Force, and I, I started learning all these shred licks. And uh, this this guy I know, uh, still know, sorry, called James. He goes, Have you, you ever listened to Jimi Hendrix? I was like, No, who's he? Uh, because um, pre-internet age, uh, which is a bit of a weird thing to think about now. I didn't even have a mobile phone when this happened. And um, it's like, How yeah, old were you then? Jimi Hendrix. You say? How old were you then, roughly? Oh, crumbs. Um, 17. So, okay. uh, yeah, 17. And this guy goes, have you heard Jimi Hendrix? I was like, no, who's that? And he showed me Voodoo Child, Slight Return. And I was just like, holy Big words. Um, <laughs> and I was just like, I was like, I need to know how to do that. And became hugely obsessed with learning Voodoo Child perfectly. And to this day, I'm still learning things about that song. There's so much in it that I learned it when I, well, as soon as, as soon as I got home, I was like, you know, oh, I, I didn't have a wah pedal. Well, I kind of did. I had a, I had a Zoom 606 uh a pedal nice. and uh it's, it kind of had a wire in it but it didn't really do anything um and because it was plastic like you know it was it was either really stiff or just kind of went Meh, and just like you know like a <laughs> i don't know something wrong and um and it was just rubber it was basically like just like the, the expression pedal was terrible the, I, the pedal itself is great but the expression pedal was so awkward and i was like i gotta learn it and i learned how to play voodoo child and then, like, all these years later, I'm still going, oh, he's doing this. And it, it's crazy. Like, before the uh, the first guitar solo in Voodoo Child, you can, if you listen really closely, you can hear Jimmy kick on his fuzz pedal and his wah, and then turn the wah off before he hits the first note of the, the guitar solo. And Jimmy would do this all the time where, like, um, he would be playing a solo and he would just turn on the wah pedal for one note and then turn it off again, and it's... It just it was again the next level from John really, and and then all of a sudden John Fashanti made more sense because I was learning Jimi Hendrix stuff, and I was like, oh, I get under a bridge more now. I can, I know where that comes from, and then back to Kurt, uh, back to people like Curtis Knight, and then back to Buddy Guy, and you get to Robert Johnson and Sunhouse, and all of a sudden you're <laughs> at the beginning of it all. It's good fun. Yeah, it doesn't <laughs> take long to get there. It doesn't no. I was also really? fairly old. I think I was about 19 before I mm. heard or got Hendrix. And mm. I remember listening to Hendrix at the age of 15 and just not understanding why people would enjoy his mm. music. Uh, it didn't mm. appeal to me at all. Um, it wasn't, I mean, I was just soft verse, loud chorus back in those days. So yeah. it's not surprising <laughs> me anymore. But um, <laughs> yeah, I'm like that with a lot of artists. But uh I have this thing where as soon as I start liking a band, one of the band members dies. So I, I try not to like new bands anymore. Just Don't like some chili peppers, please. <laughs> I'm, I'm officially unliking them right now. In my yeah. <laughs> um, let's go for some questions. Uh, Andrew Moore has a question for you. How do you feel about amp modeling and impulse response cabs? Uh, uh, they're really... Uh, I, I, I've tried a few. I can't... I can barely work my phone. So the idea of like um, like plugging into like, you know, impulse responses, those kind of stuff is just like, yeah, my idea of hell. But I have tried a few, okay. but what I do feel having played through basically Marshall Four to Twelves my entire like musical life, they're not they haven't quite captured that 
it's the sound is there, the tone is there, the feel of it is not. Mm -hmm. And it, it sounds amazing. I can happily get lost in it, but it, it, it's like the um, it's, it's like the band who do ISO cabs on stage. Uh, I, I don't know how they do it, how, how they do it. I'll just have it in it because uh, I, I, I like to feel the amp moving. I like to interact with the amp as well when it goes and uh, amp modeling and stuff like that. It, it never really just. I love it, but it never quite gets there for me. It's always a little bit. It, it, it's really hard to describe exactly what it is. Very probably isn't a word. It's probably like some kind of weird alien word that doesn't exist yet uh, to describe it. But it's like when I play through a modeler, it's like I'm playing through an amp that's a trillion miles away. Sounds mm -hmm. good, but I'm not actually feeling it. It's like they feel yeah. weird. Yeah, there's a disconnect for me. It, mm. Again, it, it sounds phenomenal, but it's a disconnect mm. between, as a player, the the, the playing and the hearing. And um, mm. I, I, what I like is is doing like IRs to a PA, for example, or IRs recording, but hearing through a cab. Mm. Um, yes. I think that's a, a really good move. But I, I need a cab on stage. I played for years in a covers band with a Pod XT, and. Um, mm. I never felt like I was actually playing the guitar. I mean, it was a different time, but um, mm. having monitors, it didn't. Uh, yeah, it's I not was the same. A, a, a it's not the same. It's not mm. the same. Stop trying trying to tell us it is, everybody. Mm. <laughs> so um, I was I was lucky once to try standing in front of two double stack Marshall hundred watt plexi heads, daisy chained together, running together on ten. Uh, that's like basically being physically assaulted. I'm pretty sure you could sue Marshall for uh, <laughs> at that point. But the that's an next, like, next lawsuit. <laughs> indeed. Um, Marshall, I'm coming to get you. Um, <laughs> but it's so physical. And, and, and what I like about loud amplifiers, considering I don't actually like loud noise, I always wear earplugs. Uh, but it's the feel. It's not mm -hmm. necessarily kind of, I don't like being battered by loud amps i like the feel of it it really it helps me shut the, the world out and and basically just turn my brain off and then it's just music that, that's what makes me happy yeah agreed agreed uh, i'm looking forward to trying a, a camper and a, a what's the other one axe fx soon i'm looking mm. forward to that but again it's that feeling what i did um I haven't released it yet. I've got a video where I've installed a, you know, those butt kickers that drummers use for oh, yeah. drums. Mm. I installed one of those under my stool. So I'm playing with headphones on, but I'm getting the vibration through my bum. And mm. that is as pleasant as it sounds. <laughs> my, my, my drummer uses one of those live. He has a, cool. what was it? Port, uh, I, I can't remember what it called, but he's got that. He's rigged to his bass drum. So every time he hits the bass drum, it, it yeah. gives him a thump. Yeah. It was weird. I is tried it, it once and I was like, it's a bit weird for me. Yeah. <laughs> is, it, is there something called a rattle plate for bass players so that they get that uh, immediate, like they stand on it and whenever they play the bass, they get mm. that vibration too. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Uh, John cool. Petrucci yeah. has something like that, doesn't he? He has like a something to put his foot on where you can feel the vibration of his amp or something like that. I can't remember. There's something yeah, like that. Yeah. I, I want one of those. A rattle yeah. plate, did you say, Dan? Uh, that's not a real like that's not a real oh, real name, okay. but I've I've seen it several times, especially bass players and bands, because they usually they have to uh, have to wear um, in ears anyways, so you know they kind of kind of get a full signal, so they need that kind of immediate response, so they go for mm -hmm. that. But I've seen that with drummers a lot as well. Mm -hmm. you know, I wonder I wonder if that could become some sort of uh, standard in 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 office uh, office work, you know. So you, you just get your your bum massaged all the time, you know. Boom, 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 boom. But you'd have to have someone playing bass next to you. Oh, you you can you That'd can just you know, well Office you can bass. just listen to some some type of music like drum and bass, you know, boop boop boop, hyper okay. hyper, stuff like that. I don't know. <laughs> wow. Base baseboard. Pooh Ninja just said baseboard. Is it baseboard? baseboard yeah it's baseboard yeah i by i i amplification correct and they do those kind of the the drum chairs as well yeah uh, a question we missed earlier today was what's your favorite kind of chip 
Um, potato okay. ones. Um, <laughs> um, ones that I'm eating. Uh, homemade. Homemade. you got a ho homemade in a deep fat fryer. Awesome. All right. I'm on a diet at the moment, and I had a serious hankering for chips and thought I might buy a deep fat fryer and realize how counterproductive that is compared to my current lifestyle, and it's killing me. Ah. But as soon as you know, I get my health goals, um, deep fat chips fryer. Ahoy. Chips ahoy. Yeah. Chips ahoy. <laughs> I'll, I'll, need the, I'll need the whole screen for myself just because I'll be so fat in the face. <laughs> I'll, I'll enjoy it, and I'll own it. <laughs> I have to sit back Bro, here. You like, like one of one of the like one of the bad Matt, uh, the bad Mike Myers movies, you know, where they had those fake fat kind of oh the oh, fat yeah. suits, yeah, the fat suits kind of yeah. like the sumo guy. Yeah. <laughs> There's three two people are suggesting an air fryer. They're I think supposed to be I'm healthier, the, aren't missed, they? I missed the yeah. boat on that. All right, I, I'm air fry. Is, how much healthier is that? Was is that? I'm talking to the people in the chat now. Um, <laughs> fryers are like distortion pedals for food. That's that's one of my favorite comments ever. Nice Robot analogy. Robot master switch. Yeah, nice analogy. Um, <laughs> and do I need so a personal a trainer? To target? It's got to be done. Yeah. And do you need a PT? Is that personal trainer? Um, yep. Or yeah. potato potato trainer? trainer. Potato trainer. Potato I need a potato trainer. 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 Nice. Yeah. Nice. Is that is that a potato that goes on your foot, or is that somebody to train your potatoes? It could be either. Yeah, that's a imagine very, if you if you question. signed up for the course and you went to the wrong one. You know, you wanted to be a potato. <laughs> mm. <laughs> to train nice. your potatoes. Wonder, you guys are aware that there are people that fry Snickers. I wonder if you would con mm. if you would uh, translate that into into the, the pedal realm. What would would that be like? Fried Snickers would be fried a like a fried distortion pedal. A fried rat. <laughs> I get the rat. feeling. I get the feeling it'd be one of the lesser successful electro harmonics pedals. Huh. Interesting. I don't know. Or no, maybe a, fr not. a whammy? Fried whammy? Fried pedals? Is that the future? I don't know. I think that is. I mean, batted, we have, we have ro ro roasted maple, batted right? Batted pedals. <laughs> you imagine, imagine like you order a pedal, it doesn't arrive in a box, it just arrives in a load of batter, and you have to kind of like get it out. Yeah. My brain's going newspaper. now. <laughs> batter pedals. Batter it's probably pedals. like daisy chaining 10, 10, 10 different wah pedals right after another, like serial connection. You know? One wah, another wah. I've done five was. I've not done ten. Yeah, it's it's it so to get a bit squishy. Yeah, it's so awkward. It's probably good at the end of the day. I don't know. Mm. Air fried fuzz. Kentucky fried fuzz. Air fried fuzz actually sounds like that? pedal. Yeah, the air fried yeah. fuzz. I'd play that. I don't even care what it sounds <laughs> like. I that. Yeah. I've just googled like air fryer and it's. Fuzz. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talk, fuzz you can eat about... after six p.m. <laughs> <laughs> talking about pedals Dave what do you think are the essential pedals to to, to sound like John Frusciante oh, good question um, there's two but one's kind of a get around uh, the DS2 the, the Boss DS2 is the you need it, it, mm -hmm. it's the it's the one like people always kind of like oh you need a false pedal and you need a big muff and you need this and the other and it's like well no the DS2 covers all basically and John John's had the DS2 he used the DS2 since he joined Chili Peppers, and that's mm -hmm. the sound, um, you know. And people say, "Oh, he combined it with this that, and the other." And yes, yes, he did definitely. But the thing is, it's like the DS2 is. I'm I'm surprised of like how there's no clones of a DS2, but it's just that the DS2 is like the only thing that sounds like a DS2, um, and and he does a great DS1 as well. If you turn it onto mode one, that's like. And I like the fact that like mode one to me is like Kurt Cobain, that's what he used. And then mode two is John Fanny. Yeah. He's like, Kurt, John, yeah. Kurt, John. Fanny. And um <laughs> But that's the that's the number one pedal. Uh the other one with the Ibanez wah. But uh any wah with a really good sweep, uh crybabies are a no. They crybabies don't really work for John. They're, they're, they're too limited on their sweep. They're, they're just 
what and that's it they need it need to be more sweepy um not so you know um and uh you can kind of get around the WH10 because because it's got a preamp in it. If you run like a, a normal wah pedal, say like a Vox uh, wah pedal, with like an overdrive pedal, you can run one into the other and boost the wah and get the same thing. So there's basically just one main pedal. It's a DS2. Everything else you can get around. Chorus you can get around. Delay, modular stuff. You can you can find it. You can find it. John, John doesn't really use a great deal of effects, even though his board is the size of, like, you know, the Great Wall of China. He he basically, <laughs> like, you know, there's, there's core distortion, wah, delay, reverb every now and again. Reverb now, he uses reverb all the time. Uh, and that, that's probably about it. You know, you, you don't really need anything else. You can cover a lot of ground with just those five things. That's an interesting comment that we just got from, who is it? Uh... I don't know which comment you're referring to. The one you you put on the screen. Okay, Matt, uh, Matt, Matt Quine. Matt. Um, yeah. I, the Guitar Geek, that's me, hello, has my old DS2. I think it's possibly the worst setting pedal I've ever owned. Yeah, I bought <laughs> Matt's DS2, <laughs> and I'd forgotten that. And it gets played very regularly. Uh, I, I, I have a bit of a fascination for the DS1 and DS2, but more, more DS1, if I'm honest. But uh, yeah. I could yeah, I could DS2 talk about the DS one for an hour if you like. Mm. I do DS2. And yeah, I absolutely the, the, agree with you. Why are there no clones of the DS two? There's a fair, mm. there's a few like more DS ones and and a few modded DS one clones, mm. but generally speaking, the DS two doesn't get uh, uh, cloned. No, but it, it does depend strange. on how you use it. Uh, I, I like yes. the way that John uses it very much. If you're going to power cord it away, I can understand why Matt says what he says, but. Mm. I, I like it with with the again with those 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 bands you were talking about and that solo. I like the way John just almost he almost plays the wrong notes sometimes. Almost. Mm. Yes, I know. I know. Well, not mean, the wrong notes, but the, the unexpected. On, yeah. Yes. Yeah. It verges on. It kind of like yeah, perks kind of ear off. It's a bit like Rory Gallagher in that way. When R Rory would play some notes, you're like, hmm, that's interesting. <laughs> it just makes you kind of look guy like yeah. You know, it's like head to the side mode. But yeah, yeah, that <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but yeah, it is. I, I love the DS2. I mean, the, the thing is, a lot of people, it's a Diva pedal. Uh, I call it a Diva pedal. It's like the WH10 Wah by Ibanez. There's certain pedals that demand you do what they want. And the DS2 is that. It's like, you know, I don't want clean signals. I want slightly distorted or distorted signals. If you give me a clean, I'll sound bad. And no matter what you do, and it's just a bit of a diva. But when you give it what it wants, all of a sudden it's like heaven, absolute heaven. It's so smooth and violiny, and I just, I, I just love it. Every time I turn it on, I'm just like hog heaven. It's amazing. So what what is the secret to giving the DS2 what it wants? What do you need to give it? Uh, it's a semi. It's like a slightly broken up, dirty, clean tone. Like it, it doesn't do clean. Uh, like it's like the Ibanez, the Ibanez Wah. When they, when Ibanez reissued the V2 uh, WH10 uh, in, I think it's about 2010 ish. Uh, a lot of people complained, saying, "Oh, it's just it sucked all the life out of my amp, and my amp sounds crap now." And uh, you know, it, it doesn't do this, and there's a huge volume jump when you turn it on because of a preamp. So you have to run the preamp low, which makes the wah weak, and it doesn't do the John thing. Um, so for a long time, I was kind of like a bit of kind of like, you know, oh, this is rubbish. But if you run your amp slightly distorted like John does, I mean, John's amps aren't clean. They, they, they sound clean because that's what the microphone's hearing. In the room, it, it won't be. Uh, and on stage, it, it definitely won't be. It'll be, it'll be. It's that plexi clean. Yeah, it, it, where it's it sounds it, but it isn't ACDC. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, as a casing point, it sounds really clean, but it's not. And um, if you give it that kind of nice squished, compressed, overdriven amp signal, they don't destroy your amp's tone. They don't like you know. There's no volume jump, this and the other. But um, John's tone's deceptively dirty. It's a lot of people kind of like say, "Oh, I can't get the volume jump." Hence, when Ibanez withdrew the V2 and bought out the V3, they put a master volume on it, which, in my opinion, weakened the pedal. Not a great deal, 
but by about ten percent, it weakened the power of the war. The power of the war, and um, <laughs> it just kind of made it a bit less of um, of what it should be. And I say it, a lot of people kind of I get a lot of questions like all the times like you know well how do I get rid of a volume jump? And it's like well if yours is still jumping, it's still too clean. You know, mm -hmm, it, right. and it's like, well, now it sounds too distorted. And the, the, the key to John Shanty's tone is, if it sounds distorted, you've got it. <laughs> it's because um, <laughs> it, it, in the room, it sounds like you could play it, it in the room. If you put like a, a Les Paul into that John Clean tone, you can play ACDC. But with a strap with really low pickups, it, it does the John Shanty thing. Hmm. Thanks, Dave. I'm, I'm actually <laughs> going to. I'm going. No, no, definitely not. That that's dropping some truth and knowledge bombs on us. I'm going to plug in my SV20 in a little bit and uh, have a little raz cool. with the strap. Oh, SV20. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um. That is our show, ladies and gentlemen. Dave Simpson has been uh, an energy life bringer tonight, and um. <laughs> Thank you, mate. And I, I must admit, I'm a little bit offended by the chip eating because only because I can't have any, you know. Yeah, um, I'll. I'll... <laughs> I hope they were disgusting, and I hope I wish you bad health the rest of your life because of that. <laughs> they were I'm super envious. Horrific. I've actually good, put good. On chips for life. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm a happy boy. Um, yeah, thank you. What, what's next for Dave Simpson? Um, you're going to be back at Anderton soon, or, or are you going to be doing um, some more band stuff? You've got some gigs booked? More band stuff. Yeah, gig, a gig at the end of this month. Um, rehearsals and uh, rocking it rock about quite a lot. Backwards and forwards this month to one place or another to see family. Uh, more videos. Toneless boxes on the horizon. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm actually really looking forward to because it is it's like plug it in it's like da -da, nothing 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 pedal um, uh, <laughs> but uh, yes yeah, like that uh, hopefully more more gear coming this way I hope always so. fun. sounds like fun I need to start commenting on your channel because I'm watching videos but I always feel weird about commenting on other people's videos because like hey, look at me attention please I, I know, know exactly I feel... how you yeah I know what you mean. It feels like you're kind of like trying to steal attention away from somebody. It's like, I'm desperate. Like, no, I'm just trying to support. I mean, I am. People. I absolutely 100% <laughs> am. But also, I just want to say hi. <laughs> <laughs> but now I shall. I can't wait for that Vox video. Uh, Dan, would you mm. please ask our audio listeners to review and leave us five stars, please? Yeah, all right. All right. As usual, if you enjoyed this episode and if you enjoyed the Guitar Source podcast, make sure to grab your cell phone or your wife's cell phone or Dave Simpson's cell phone and give us a five-star rating on iTunes or leave us a rating on Spotify. Yeah, there it is. Because it will help, <laughs> us, to, it will help us to spread the word, get more guests on the show and make sure that we make it to episode 100. Can't wait. Can't wait. Yep, me neither. Me neither. Dave, thank you so much for joining us, man. It's been a blast. Um, no, I, I feel inspired to play to play John now, so I'm, I'm going to awesome. go and murder some snow, I think. Oh, I don't believe <laughs> that for a second. <laughs> can, I, I've never met a person, like, literally, I was, I was having a conversation with Guillaume from Toman, guys, who can actually nail that, like, in a steady tempo throughout the whole course of the song. Mm. It's so demanding, isn't it? It's a workout for sure. Um, Dave, Dave disagrees. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 Come I'm on, Dave. Always, Ten minutes of snow. Uh, one sec. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see that. Right. Like, like, really, I, I've seen so many bands playing that tune, and they always <sighs> kind of, you know, get lost in in the in the uh, in the tempo at the, at the course of the show. Okay. I don't know how you'd be able to hear that, uh, if anything. Oops. Yeah, very yeah. loud, very perfect. Very clanky and unplugged electric guitar. The trick is when you start talking over it and playing it, and people are like, how are you doing that? <laughs> yeah. John Shanty note. You just end up playing it. <laughs> what's, what's, your, what's the picking pattern? Like, how, how do you do that? Like, um, are you up, down, up? Is it alternate picking or? Come on down here. Uh, so it's kind of. So down, so down, down, down. Uh, sorry, down, down, up, down. And then that, that little 
part of that diddly dum uh-huh. um, is an, a kind of an up pick. Uh, John John actually plays it in a really bizarre manner. I play it differently to John. I tend to use my um, little finger and ring finger. John uses these. Uh, uses that. He does like John plays like. Uh, Which is really, really weird and quite awkward. Mm-hmm. Whereas I find that is a lot easier. Um, mm-hmm. It just flows better. But uh, it is, I mean, it's one of those things that I think it, it, it's like, you know, when you're running scales and stuff like that. I think it's just one of those things if you keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it, eventually it just kind mm-hmm. of locks in. And the less you can concentrate on it, which, like anything on guitar, or bass or drums. The less you actually think about it, the the better it is because you can relax. And again, once you can actually talk over something like that and play it, you know you've kind of got it because it's just that's a good. It's just muscle memory then. Yeah, yeah, that's a good tip. That's a very good tip. I got I got to try that. But like I said, I've 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 seen so many performances of bands that kind of almost got it, but you know they were always a little mm. bit shaky when it came to to the tempo. So to me, it was yeah. a little bit like like a, a James James Hetfield's Downstrokes. If you can yes. nail like yeah. Master of Puppets throughout the course of the whole mm. song, then you got it, you know. So yeah, yeah. yeah. The yeah but thanks the for showing us. <laughs> thanks, <man>. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm, oh, I'm going to make that a guitar goal. Like, I'm trying to set some guitar goals recently, just to be clear cool. and focused. And that's going to be one of them. Thank you for that. Yeah. No Dan, I will speak to you very soon. Dave, let's get you back on the show at some point in That'd the future. Awesome. It's been great. Um, I wish you the very best, Andertons from the band Thank and with the channel, and looking forward to particularly that Vox video. But um, yes. now I feel legitimate that I can say hi in the comments, so I, I shall. Yes, please do. Please do. Thank you very Approved. much. Yes. Okay. Um, every, everybody watching live, thank you for joining us live. And if you're listening on the audio version, please drive safely or eat your breakfast and pay attention to your family, whatever you're doing. You know, give them time as well, not just us. It's not all about us. We'll see you very soon. <laughs> bye bye. Bye-bye. Guitar Stories Podcast, your number one show for everything.